National LGBT Health Awareness Week, and uh, we'll learn what's being done locally and with the goal to support this cause. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. The National LGBT Health Awareness Week kicks off today. And our next guest, uh, they join us from, uh, for a look at the, their programs to support this. We welcome Jennifer, Jennifer Rafsky, and uh, also um, their partners in care. Rhonda Soberman is here, too, visiting Nurse Services of New York. We welcome you guys to the show. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. So we're here. This is it. This is it. Well, it's a special week today, and aside from the fact that it's your birthday, happy <gasps> birthday, oh, we thank wanted you. to talk a little bit about National LGBT I Health Awareness I forgot it was my birthday, but go ahead. And we have one of these little LGBT uh, pride pins. Well, we thank you, you so much. Like thank you. Thank you very much. So we're concerned about LGBT seniors in particular because we know that from past experience of stigma and other types of uh, fear of violence and other things that many of these people are at risk of not accessing the care they need. And Visiting yeah. Nurse Service of New York has done an amazing job in trying to bring mm. together programs and services that can really meet the needs of LGBT seniors in their home. Our whole focus is on helping people to remain safely and securely in their home and community and providing the services in spaces where yeah they feel safe. Let's talk about the stigma. How does that affect our seniors? Well, many of these individuals have a fear of social acceptance. They grew up in a time where there was far less acceptance than there is today. This is much of their adolescence and, and early adult life where they were faced with prejudice, mm -hmm. discrimination. And so it makes them weary of accepting help. You can imagine even having someone you don't know coming into your home to deliver a care, they're less likely to accept that kind of care. Mm -hmm. And then from a healthcare institutional standpoint, up until 1973, homosexuality was considered a mental disorder. And it wasn't until 2013 that transgender status was removed as gender identity disorder. So when you think about all of these past transgressions, it causes this particular population to be less likely to seek out health care because of all of the stigma that's been associated with it for so long. Mm -hmm. and, and why the main focus on seniors? Well, we feel seniors are most at risk at this point. Uh, for those who have gone through HIV and AIDS, they are long-term survivors, and now they are faced with the same chronic health care issues that seniors reach at this point in their yeah. life, and they are less likely to reach out for help and for support, and that puts them in great danger of ending up in the places that they don't want to be, either running back and forth to hospitals and emergency rooms or being institutionalized. Yeah. So we really want seniors to understand that VNSMY has made a safe space so that they can get the care that they need in their home and remain in their community and be yeah. the best that they can be. And you know, we have uh, an audience looking at this for the first time. Right. And they say, wow, we have help? I didn't know. I exactly. thought it was this and that and that, and I thought it was so complicated. What's, tell them how, give us some steps on how they can get involved. Well, first of all, on our website, vnsmy.org, we have a LGBT page that people can access and understand some of the things that we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. But mostly, people need to know that at different points in their life, they may need some intermittent care, just a short-term intervention of health care services, or maybe they have a chronic illness and mm -hmm. they need ongoing chronic care services. And then there are times in their life, it may be towards the end of life, where they need a lot of support in order to make that uh, more comfortable and caring for themselves or for a loved one. So we're here at all those phases in life to really help people transition from one to the other. They don't need to know exactly what kind of care they need. All they need to know is to call us and we will help them. That they do have the care. That, that, that care is yeah. available and we'll help them figure out what's the right care mm -hmm. for this moment in time and help them through that process. Jennifer, how did you get involved? How did you know that this is what you wanted to do? Help others get what they need out of life? Well, at Partners in Care, we're, we've been part of the Visiting Nurse Service of New York for the last 125 years, and we're committed to creating an environment that's welcoming and bias-free. And we know that people want to stay in the community, and it's so important yeah. that the services that are offered are services that they are going to be able to accept and feel comfortable and be able to grow um, in their home and, and be safe and stay there. And so at Partners, we understood that 
we employ over 10,000 home health aides. So these are individuals that are out in the community every day working with these patients. And we want to make sure that all of these patients get the empathy, the courtesy, and respect that they deserve and get the best care possible. I love the work that you guys are doing. And I'm, I'm glad that you're here creating the awareness, letting people know that there is a place that uh, people can call on and, and get help. Exactly. Our founder, Lillian Wald, 125 years ago, uh, founded the Visiting Nurse Service of New York with that goal of helping people to remain safely and successfully in their community. And mm -hmm. we are pleased to be able to follow that tradition with all the programs and services we provide through our organization. And where can people go to get more information and how can they get involved in your services? Well, we, as I said, we have a website, uh, vnsny.org, or they can call us at 212-609-7500, and there's always somebody available to be able to take their call and mm -hmm. explain uh, the services we have and under, help them to understand where they would best fit in. It's all about choices. And, and as the private pay affiliate of the Visiting Nurse Service of New York, we can be reached um, by phone at 1-889-GET-HELP. One eight eight nine get, get help. help. Yes, and we've trained um, all of our home health aides through the Sage organization, which is an LGBT advocacy group for seniors. And it was really important for us to not only help the aides to understand the sensitivity and the unique needs of this population, but be able to care for them in a way that they feel welcomed. And our services are customizable. All of our aides are supervised by a registered nurse who sits down and creates a customized plan of care mm -hmm. for the patient and their family. Excellent. And service can be short term, it can be intermittent, it can be round the clock. So there's great flexibility with our service offerings and we're always happy to help and we're just a phone call away. Well, thank you for your services and I'm glad you're there and thank you for the pin. You're well, very welcome. Thank you very much. Give them a big hand everybody. Rhonda Silberman. L C S W V N S Y V N S N Y. Uh, she's a program developer uh, with the program development, and uh, I'm not going to say your name wrong. I'm going to say it right. <laughs> Jennifer Rayevsky. Yes, yeah, very good. Of course, if you look at it, it says something. It says something else. But thank you guys for coming. So thank you thank very you much. For thank you for having us. Thank you for the opportunity us. to let people know yes, about we, what we do. You're always welcome. Come back again. We thank will. You. Okay. Thank, thank you. you so much.